Greetings, Blood Bowl fans and coaches of all stripes. You've already had a look at several of the teams that will be included in Blood Bowl 3 when it launches. This year, some of you were even able to try out the game in closed beta. Today, we're pleased to be able to tell you a bit more about two teams that will be making their first appearance in the game. The Chaos Renegades and the Old World Alliance. What these two teams have in common is that they're made up of several players that are usually in other teams. So, with the Old World Alliance, you'll be able to make up a team that includes humans, dwarves, halflings, and the famous Tree Man support. This team combines the flexibility of the humans with the resistance of the dwarves. And if you still need a bit more punch, you've got the Tree Man, who can really block his own. But make sure you manage the different parts of your team correctly, though. Basically, the humans tend to refuse to pass the ball to other players, and the dwarves play very independently, which might make you use up too many rerolls. We had fun designing new, unique customization options for this team with markings from both the human and dwarf teams, so there is a single team look rather than different ones. And this is especially obvious with the Tree Man, who has a really unique look. The Chaos Renegades, for their part, are an unlikely alliance of humans, dark elves, skaven, and greenskins, alongside the big guys of Chaos. One small point that sets this team apart is that it can recruit up to three tough players, so they really are devastatingly strong and intimidating. Because of their allegiance to the Gods of Chaos, every player on the team has special access to mutation skills, giving them a lot of flexibility. Blood Bowl 3 has also given us the chance to highlight a new, major game feature, the pitches, which have specific gameplay rules. Today, we're going to give you an early look at three of them. The first is the Chaos Chosen Pitch, with mounds of skulls, stone pillars swaying in the magic wind, and molten lava. It is clearly a pitch occupied by dark forces. The pitch starts out in a completely normal way, but if one of the players from either team ever spills blood during the first half, it will draw the attention of demonic entities. In the second half, heat and lava will make the game a lot more complicated. Sprinting players will trip and fall more easily, and some of them may even be forced to miss entire drives if they succumb to heat stroke. The second of these pitches is dedicated to one of the four gods of chaos, Nurgle, the god of disease, decay, and rebirth. At first, the pitch is dormant, but if any player is ever unfortunate enough to die on this sacred ground, then the pitch will awaken from its slumber. Carnivorous plants, and swarming worms, what had been silent, starts to hum with life. Fast players are more likely to fall down, and it becomes difficult for them to interact with the ball, encouraging a slow and defensive game, which gives Nurgle's team a particular advantage. The third of these pitches is that of the Dark Elves. What's special about this pitch is that it was built over water, but there's more. Beneath the waves lurks a monstrous sea creature. And beware, if either team scores a touchdown in the first half, it might stir. A roaring crowd awakens the impressive tentacled monster. During the second half of the match, the pitch is partly flooded, and stunned players will have trouble coming around. The players will also have to move more slowly in order to avoid the monster's tentacles. So, now i just like to say I hope you all have a great day, great matches, and of course, a little bit of luck with the dice. We hope you have enjoyed all these new features. We genuinely can't wait to show you even more. Blood Bowl 3 holds some more tremendous surprises for you. So, we will say, see you soon on the pitch, coaches.